Good morning, happy Thursday. Today and tomorrow we have half days for parent-teacher conferences. Um, I told you last week I'd already met with a couple parents and so that was going really well. So today is kind of where we have the bulk of them. Um, I told you I wanted to spread mine out so I didn't have them all just today and tomorrow kind of back to back to back. So I do have some breaks in between to kind of prepare for the next uh, parent that's coming. But so far they have gone great. My own two boys conferences have gone great. So that is exciting. Um, I do want to show you in this video, I want to talk about math because next week we are starting fact families and um, we've been really focusing on addition and subtraction strategies within 10 and now we're going to teach how we kind of combine them together. So I just wanted to go over a couple lessons we're doing next week as well as kind of what my math block actually looks like. Okay, so first we're going to do a few lessons on fact families because I really want my students to understand the connection between addition and subtraction. Um, and we always, every day, start with some sort of math talk. So for the first day, we're actually going to introduce it using my math slides. Um, and so here's the math talk. It says, how can you connect these numbers using the symbols plus sign, minus sign, and equal sign? And just kind of gather some ideas and see how many equations we can come up with. And I'm hoping we can come up with all four. And then we always have the explicit teaching part. So a fact family is a group of related addition and subtraction facts. Within each family, you'll have two addition problems and two subtraction problems. And then I just have them kind of highlighted here in um, blue and red, just explaining the flip-flop facts. And then here, you know, since it's subtraction, we're always gonna start with that biggest number. And then the uh, menu end, or sorry, the subtrahend is gonna be the one that changes as well as the difference. I don't usually teach subtrahend and menu end, but I may, may or not. And then for the watch me practice, I have some just some cards that are numbers like zero through nine, and I'm going to pick two of them. So I'm gonna purposely pick two and five so we can do this together, um, and then show them how I'll add these together to make our first fact family. Um, I will explain too that we could, you know, subtract them to get the other number, um, but for now we're just gonna add these two numbers to get uh, the fact family that we want. So then I'll show them how to fill out this kind of fact family house here. And then partners are gonna do the same thing. So I'm still debating if I'm gonna actually print out, because I don't think I wanna print out all those cards. I can just have students roll two dice to find their first two numbers of the fact family and then add them together to get the third number. And then they will practice doing this on their little house. Um, and I'm gonna put these houses in um, those plastic sleeves so they can continue to use that over and over with a dry erase marker. And then students will do it on their own. So we always have you know gradual release model where we do a talk first, we can really get thinking about what we're going to be learning, then I'm going to explicitly teach, watch me do it, do it together with a partner, and independently complete it. And this is just a worksheet that they will do with some different numbers here, and they'll have to fill it out. I also purposely did 5 plus 5, or 5, 5, and 10 down there, because I want students to recognize that uh, not much changes in those, because sometimes they're like, wait, there's no flip-flop fact, or the flip-flop fact is exactly the same. And then for our final closing, we always have a closing side to, you know, close up the lesson. But it says, look at the top of the fact family house. It looks like a number bond. How is a number bond like a fact family? And I really want them to focus on this because we talk a lot about number bonds in part, part, whole, um, which we've been talking about a lot. And this is our first time talking about a fact family. So I just want them to see kind of how a fact family and a number bond are related and talk about that. So after all those whole group and small group activities, when students go back to their seats, I'm actually going to have them use IXL to complete some independent practice. I love IXL and I'm really excited to be partnering with them today in today's video because I truly use the app all the time in my classroom. As a teacher, I love that I can go onto IXL and assign specific ready-made activities that give my students practice with the exact same skills I'm teaching in class. It truly saves me so much time and is no prep. Let me show you how it works. Here's what the IXL dashboard looks like, and IXL truly makes it so easy to find the right skills for your classroom. They've done the work of matching IXL skills to hundreds of textbooks, state standards, tests, and more. To go along with our fact families here, we have an example activity that students can use. This is fact families up to 10. And what I love about IXL is it also has this audio component for my students that can't read yet. What fact is missing from this fact family? So if you want to try out IXL with your own kids, just click on the link in my description and you will get a 30 day free trial if you're a teacher. And for parents, you get 20% off your first month or year.
look at the air has started. So those blow like all day, it drives me crazy. Um, I talked about using yellow and red counters in uh, an old fact family video right here. This is where I talk about some ideas and activities for teaching fact families to your kids. So you can go ahead and watch that video. But a lot of what I say in that video is what I'm doing in my class. So then I like to take out the yellow and red counters. So we'll use this on day two to again, kind of strengthen this fact family relationship. My plan for this is to give everybody seven of these counters and they're gonna sit at their seats while I do this under the dock cam. And we will first kind of talk about how many counters there are. There are seven. And then I want students to go ahead, I'm gonna ask them to flip three of them over. So they're always gonna match mine. And we're gonna talk about how we can relate these numbers. So we might say three plus four equals seven. And then I'll ask students, okay, what if I switch it like this? And we will say four plus three equals seven. And we'll kind of see how, again, we have the two different parts. We can put them in either way, either order. They still equal seven. And then I'll say, okay, take a look at these. And I want everybody to cover up the yellow and remove it. What did we just do here? And they'll say, hopefully, seven minus three equals four. Okay, put them back. Now go ahead and cover up these four. Take it away. Seven minus four equals three. And I'm thinking for now, I'm gonna have them do it like this. We'll do that together whole group and then I will just have them say it aloud but then I'm going to give them their whiteboard and marker and with a partner I want them to try this so I'll ask them to flip them back all over to red uh, so again we still have seven here and then I'm going to ask them to flip over a different amount to yellow so we flipped over three to yellow now flip over a different amount maybe they want to do one them and their partner can decide maybe they want to do one and six and now I'm going to ask them on their whiteboard to show the fact family show all the different uh, equations we can make with their new parts. So they would say one plus six and they need to show it. They would write one plus six equals seven on their board. Then they would say six plus one and I like to physically have them move it just so again we're seeing that kind of concrete with the abstract that they're writing. Six plus one equals seven and then they'll say okay seven minus six equals one and seven minus one equals six. And again, we kind of emphasize the whole time that we've always had seven. With this seven, there are so many different equations and uh, parts that we can make. So after we do that little activity whole group with the um, red and yellow counters, just to kind of, again, talk about those fact families, get a real good conceptual understanding of the connections between numbers. I have been having my students kind of go off in partners for their partner work to do some task cards. So let me show you what those are gonna look like. So for task cards, I like to largely differentiate this. And right now, I do have some fact family activities that I will show you that our students will complete independently. But right now, we're really focusing on addition and subtraction still within 10. So let me show you which ones we will be doing. First and foremost, we have a jump and solve. Uh, we learned a lot of different strategies for subtraction, and one of them was counting back. So I love this one because students can just use their little marker and they can hop back and write down the difference here in the box. And I always teach my students to do this with a partner. I teach them how to coach one another. Um, so for instance, each student will grab a card, they will complete it together, and then before they pass it in or before they get a new card, sorry, they have to check one another's um, before they can kind of move on. So that's something I try to teach them because I don't have a recording sheet for any of these. I find that I don't often need them. I do have an aide in the classroom who can kind of monitor if students are really doing it incorrectly. This is a fun one that I give some of my um, higher students. This is just decode and solve. So they just have kind of a number code here and uh, it's just another step. It's still just, you know, subtraction within 10, but instead of it saying the numbers, it'll say strawberry minus grape. And then they look at the number code, strawberry minus grape would be 10 minus five. They write it down and solve. This one also has room on the bottom if they need to draw pictures to help. This one is very tactile, fill and take. So here we have a 10 frame, again, working on that uh, concrete part here. So they will actually put eight cubes in the 10 frame and then take away one and write the difference. This one my kids love, sprinkle and take. You can use any small manipulative to put on the donuts, but my students actually just like to draw the sprinkles. So seven, they would go ahead and draw seven little sprinkles on the donut, and then they would cross out one and write the difference. 
And then here's another one that they like, count and cross out. So I hope you can see that they're all different strategies that students are working on. So here we can do the cross out strategy where we can actually go ahead and cross it out. Here we can draw it and then erase. Here we can use manipulatives to fill it up. We have the number code, which is much more abstract. And then we have a number line. And then for some of my students who are really working on that abstract portion, we have subtract and clip. So let me open this. Again, I like this because I can really differentiate as needed. So these students would be, again, some of my higher ones who have mastered subtraction so far, where they are looking at the difference in the middle, five, and then they have to look at all of those equations there and clip or circle all the ones that uh, have a difference of five. They can use manipulatives or their fingers as needed, but these I often give to my students that are kind of working at that abstract level. And then in a very similar way, I have the same types of activities for addition as well. So roll, smash, and add. I think I've shared these ones before, my addition ones. Um, this is a Play-Doh one, so they'll actually go ahead and roll up little Play-Doh balls and then smash them to add, so a very concrete, tactile one. This one I like because they have to actually stack on the dominoes. They will stack up cubes. So six plus four, there would be a stack of six, a stack of four. Again, that concrete representation. Um, and they can see and visualize those two numbers before they add it. This would be an abstract one, similar to that other clip one. They see a sum here of four, and then they have to quickly identify all of the equations that equal four. Here is count and add. They can go ahead and draw little watermelon seeds on there or use something small as manipulatives to add together. Add and clip is the same as subtract and clip, except with addition. And then link and add, this is a class favorite. Um, here's a little picture of students doing it right here. But this one, they actually get to link. I actually hole punch down at the bottom, so they add the links. And again, they can visually see the sum when they add it together, which I love. Now, what I think I might do is since my students have been working on some of those task cards for a little bit now, um, I do rotate them through again as they work from that concrete to the representational to the abstract. So they are kind of moving up along the way and I'm able to differentiate for them. But I think I'm also going to give them one of our number bond um, frames. Let me see if I can find it. So I have a bunch of laminated number bond mats that we used in my whole group number bond lesson. So not a fact family, but again, we're, we will have already talked about the relationship between a number bond and a fact family. So I might have them fill this chart um, for some of those problems. I probably won't have it do it for all of them, but as they, you know, solve an addition problem, they can write three plus four equals seven in the um, number bond. Just to again, show that relationship and really understand the connection between the numbers. And then with subtraction, which we've talked about a lot, we need to know that the whole number is our whole, right? And that the part we're subtracting is one part and what we're actually solving is the other part. So that's something we are still working on and is a little tricky. So that's why I might have them use this, especially for my groups doing subtraction. So for independent work, I actually just printed this out because I knew I had some fact family things. But as I'm looking at it, since I made this a while ago and you might know I'm following Math and Focus as our scope and sequence this year, that's our curriculum. And we've only taught addition and subtraction within 10 so far, and now we're teaching the connection with the fact family. But these worksheets I have go up to 20. So I think I can easily edit this. I think I still, some the problem with some of my old ones are, um, I might not have the original file, but I think I have this. So let me show you what it looks like. I think I'm gonna just edit it for numbers zero to 10. I have two different ones here. These are called Find My Family. Um, they're the same activity, just two different sheets. And so for this one, there's a little fact family house here and students have to cut these out and paste them in the correct family. Um, and then there's going to be a missing problem in each one and they have to fill in the missing problem as well. So kind of a multi-step, like let's see if we can find the relationship, which fact family does it belong in? And then at the end of that, can we fill in the last one? So they need to identify both addition sentences, both subtraction sentences and see which one is missing. And then I also have fix the family that I was going to do with students independently too. This one in every single house, there is one that is a problem. Um, it might be a repetition like this one here, or it might be an equation that's wrong, doesn't include one of the numbers in the fact family. So they really need to kind of look closely and see which one's wrong. They'll cross it out and write the correct one down on the line. So I think I have this weekend and a little bit of time tonight. So I think I'm actually just gonna go in and edit these so they are all within 10. 
Um, this is a free file over on TPT, so the new additions that have the ones to 10, I'll go ahead and update it, and then I'll link that down below in case you want it. I also printed out these for some fun partner work that we will do. I'm gonna go ahead and laminate them so I can use them each year, but just little candy cane match, candy cane, I mean candy corn matchups. So I will go ahead and cut these out and I'll cut out the pieces and students will work with a partner. Um, so I'll just give them a couple of each, but they'll work with a partner to find out which ones are related and how they can go ahead and make that fact family. So they'll have to recognize, okay, six, is two plus four, so they have to put it together. It's a little tricky. And then once they have their candy corn fact, there is a recording sheet for them to do. Um, let me see, this is by Stephanie Dillon, 2016, um, over on TPT. So they will go ahead and write the three numbers and then the fact family. And like I said, I'll have them do this with a partner. Um, so this might be on day three. So I might do a little whole group review and then this little partner activity to see how they do with it. So that is what we are up to in math over the next you know, week or so. We're really reinforcing that addition and subtraction within 10, focusing on that connection, learning about a fact family and reinforcing number bonds. Um, as always, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have any other tips or ideas for teaching fact families or anything else for addition and subtraction within 10, let me know down in the comments. The week after this, I think we're about to give our unit test for this one, and then we will move on to geometry. So I think we're talking about 2D, I think 2D and 3D shapes, but if not, it's just 2D and their characteristics, but I think it's actually both. So we're going to go into geometry for a little bit before we then do uh, numbers up to 20. We really focused on just one through 10 so far. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.